So this is the bi-weekly COVID-19 response committee meeting. We're joined by the Commissioner of Health and Human Services, Commissioner Halton Harris. We're also joined by Councillor Edwards and Councillor Hurst. And we see Pete Goonan from the Republican. I'm Chairman Jesse Letterman. Commissioner, thank you for being with us again. And as we were just discussing for all that you and your department are doing, um, I know you have a couple of updates with the mask mandate having gone into effect yesterday. Um, so I'll turn it over to you to provide anything you would like to um, update us on and then we'll take counselors questions and um, and then close. Thank you. So um, again, thank you very much, Councilor Letterman. I appreciate your support as far as this work is concerned. Um, last week, numbers are skewed. The Maven system went, had maintenance done on Saturday. So there were no numbers reported for Saturday. So the numbers uh, through Friday equaled 499. And on the surface, it would appear that we had less cases than the week before, which was 547. However, as I said, there were no numbers reported because of uh, maintenance on Saturday. On Sunday, I got the numbers and they were 194. The system being maintained or having maintenance, all of Saturday's numbers went to Sunday. And so the system did not break out which numbers are from Saturday and which numbers are from Sunday. So we got 194 cases on Sunday. And then on Monday, we went down and it was 56 cases. And that was um, yesterday. Today's number is 111 for one day. So as you can see, based on the data, um, our numbers continue uh, to go in the wrong direction. And so we are um, uh, still experiencing uh, the surge as far as COVID is concerned, which obviously uh, is very concerning. The data is up on the website. You certainly can uh, look at it. And when you see the data on the website, it says um, cases not counted on 9-11 due to system maintenance. Uh, so that is um, really where we are for last week. However, the week coming up is going to again be skewed because that 194 will be counted on Sunday and then we'll have the rest of the week's numbers as well. So we will not get back to apples and apples comparison probably until the following week. This is the first time that the system has gone down for maintenance. So this has not been a regular occurrence. It's not something that's happened in the past. And so uh, again, unable to break out Saturday's uh, numbers. So the numbers for last week was um, 499, which is an under representation of the numbers. The uh, numbers uh, continue to skew in the 30 and under age group, which uh, last week, again, we don't have Saturday's numbers, but they were 51% um, under 30 and from 31 to 50 was 28% and then 51 and older, 21% not a true comparison because we do not have those uh, Saturday uh, numbers. So uh, last week uh, will be one that will have to kind of look at the numbers and understand that it is a under representation of the numbers um, from last week. In having discussions uh, with uh, my colleagues and other boards of health, uh, we just uh, have uh, highlighted and made our constituents and those who we work with aware of the fact that the numbers, again, are not uh, concrete. 
As far as um, vaccination rates, I know that uh, you know that 47% of Springfield is fully vaccinated. 54% of our residents have had uh, one dose. We are continuing to lag behind the state at about 20%. We at the Department of Health and Human Services have shuttered our large um, vaccination clinics. So we are not at Ray Jordan at this point, and we are not at Brightwood at this point. What we've done is transition our vaccine clinics to the Department of Health and Human Services. We have a clinic there at 311 State Street. We have we are there from four to six on Tuesday, which is where we were as far as Brightwood, um, Ray Jordan was concerned. And then on Thursday, we're vaccinating from 11 to 130 again at 311 State Street in our clinic there. There is parking available for our residents. Um, and we are mainly doing walk-in clinics uh, at this point. The utilization, we just made this transition uh, a week and a, two weeks ago, actually now. Um, and so the numbers are small, but our residents are getting used to the fact that we are now um, at 311 State Street. 311 State Street, as you know, is in the sort of heart of Springfield in terms of downtown and uh, midway uh, to uh, the hill, if you will. Uh, so we are hopeful, the fact that we're right in the middle center or easily accessible to our residents that we'll see uh, foot traffic uh, increase. Um, so that's where we are as far as vaccination clinics are concerned. Again, the numbers um, are uh, something that we're continuing uh, to uh, watch carefully. Uh, I'm hopeful that we're putting out information, we're flyering the community, we're going into neighborhoods, we're letting our residents know that we are at 311 State Street, they can walk in, get their vaccine, uh, our nurses will take excellent care of them. So that is what I'm going to say about data. I'll move on to the mass mandate, but why don't I stop there and see if there's any uh, questions for me about data at this point. Um, counselors, do you have any questions for the commissioner relative specifically to the data question? I have a few questions, but not specifically on the data. So I think you can continue on, Commissioner. Okay. So the mask mandate um, is something, as you know, went into effect on Monday. And let me just give you a little background around why it was important uh, to do the mask mandate. As you know, um, I have been working closely with Trinity Health Systems as well as Bay State Health um, over the um, entire pandemic. But our hospital systems have become overwhelmed as far as their patient base is concerned. Bay State has 1,400 openings or maybe 1,500 openings, um, but Dr. Kerouac uh, reported to me 1,400 um, openings as far as staffing is concerned. So their staffing levels have decreased and not where they would like them to be right now. The Western region, as you know, Bay State is the only trauma one level, trauma level uh, one uh, hospital in the Western region. As a level one uh, trauma center, they are in the Western region responsible for 5% of the state's population. When we met, there were, um, they had 14% of the COVID cases uh, in their hospital. So it was really clear that our hospitalization rates uh, across the systems are up. Dr. Kerouac also reported um, that his concern is needing to shutter or shut down emergency room or not being able 
to take uh, patients into the emergency room. He was concerned about the fact that our, um, you know, um, our that we may have to divert ambulances from Bay State to other hospitals. So Bay State uh, reported being at a critical juncture as far as patient care is concerned. Also, um, they, he talked about the fact that um, it could potentially not be able to take individuals who had chronic disease like heart attacks and other medical emergencies because of the number of beds that were being held uh, by COVID patients. So Dr. Roos also reported the same thing that although the numbers are less because the numbers are less, uh, but they still are seeing an increase um, uh, as far as their patient base is concerned. And you all know already what the numbers are for our residents in the city of Springfield. And so um, to put a mask mandate in place or to require masks uh, made sense uh, in consultation with uh, Dr. Kerouac, as well as, uh, well, particularly Dr. Kerouac, we made um, the, his um, call was really an important one, and our discussion was a very, very important one. So we put the mask mandate in place. It went in place on Monday. When we developed the language for the regulation that, that came from uh, the Board of Health, when uh, we developed the language for the re the um, uh, language for the uh, document that we used as a regulation, it was clear to me we were not going to be able to enforce um, in the way we wanted to, and so that's why the regulation says that we're asking the businesses as well as the other um, entities to uh, enforce. I spent some time today out. Uh, I went to four uh, places, three big box stores. I went to a smaller uh, store. And what I saw was really heartening. Every place had a sign out that said, in order to enter, you need to have on a mask. And so I, that was very important. And walking around the stores, um, I saw people adhering to it, that this was today. Of course, it's the second day. I'm sure that there will be individuals who may not be compliant, but today what I saw was um, stores that were really adhering uh, to the uh, mask uh, mandate. The $300 that we uh, have put in as a fine uh, really is just prevention. Uh, if we see egregious violations or um, just stores who are unwilling or businesses who are unwilling to adhere uh, to the language of the um, regulation, then I think we obviously need to uh, uh, be in a position to be able to dispense with, some, with fines. But uh, we are really hopeful that doesn't happen. We don't want to be the mask police and we don't want our residents to be the mask police. And that's why in the regulation, it asks our residents not to enforce, but rather to um, make a telephone call and not take it upon themselves uh, to try to uh, enforce this mask mandate. I'm gonna stop because I do have um, a five o'clock, uh, another five o'clock meeting uh, with the museums. They are thinking about some stronger language uh, for their um, for their organization. I, I'm on that board of um, trustees and they put together a public safety uh, committee that I, I serve on. So let me stop there. Uh, that's great, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Any questions for the commissioner, please feel free to raise your hand in the queue and while we see if anybody raises their hand. Commissioner, I was actually gonna ask about any communication we've had with um, large employers in the city relative to the vaccination of their employees. I know that you know, the president has issued some guidelines now um, for employers with over 100 employees. I know I saw uh, Mr. Bullduck was quoted in the paper about that today. Have we heard from any other uh, large employers? I know in the beginning also you were going out and doing some clinics at larger settings. Uh -huh. Um, but have we heard anything uh, recently from them about folks either asking us to come out and do clinics or um, regarding the 
guidance issued by the uh, federal administration? So the federal administration, the CDC and FDA, while the president uh, made his comments about over 100 uh, employees and um, uh, wanting to mandate vaccines, the regulation or the executive order has not been promulgated. So there has been no language that has put, been put on, on the books so that un, uh, um, businesses can understand what that really means as far as their organizations are concerned. So while this broad statement was made, uh, again, we're waiting for the guidance. So I have not, I have heard from some businesses who want to move forward on their own and put these mandates in place, and some of them are. And you've heard about some of the larger um, airlines and other organizations who are putting them in place uh, for their employees. But what uh, individuals are saying to me in businesses is we are anxious to see the language that's going to go along with the president's speech around mandating uh, vaccines. Okay. And my other question um, was similar to a couple of weeks ago now with school having started. Do we have uh, re any results now from the pool testing or any reports out of the district in terms of um, what that has looked like in the last two weeks? Just got off the phone with Jeannie Clancy, um, and we are uh, going to be at the school committee on Thursday. I will do an update with uh, the city's uh, information. She will talk about uh, the school department. We are at the school department in the uh, position to be able to now pool test. Um, and there are obviously positive results, but based on 23,000 uh, school children being back in at this point, the numbers um, really are not, um, if, you, if you aggregate it based on the 23,000, it really is low. Um, but there are positives, and um, she will, on Thursday, uh, give a report that will highlight and outline uh, what they are seeing uh, as far as the nursing team is concerned. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hurst? Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Commissioner, a um, couple questions. Uh, one, um, have, have we thought about a reduction in the number of individuals gathering um, either in public or outside? Has that, has that been considered yet? It has not. Um, so, um, well, when I say it has not, we have not done capacity limits yet. We are hopeful uh, that we don't need to do that outside and or inside. Um, we know that once we uh, do the capacity limits, it's going to impact restaurants, it's gonna impact businesses. So um, to your point, it's probably, it may be something that we have to do. Uh, we are supposed to meet, with, I'm supposed to meet with, I, I meet with the uh, systems, the healthcare systems at least once a week. And um, if we need to uh, do that, then I think everyone has an appetite to do what it'll take to make people safe. But right now, um, have we thought of it? Absolutely. We've done it in the past. Are we thinking about doing it right now? At this point, I would say that answer is no. We hope that the mask um, mandate will decrease our cases in a way that allow us to not do that if people adhere to the social distancing, face coverings, hand washing and vaccination. Got it. Got it. And then um, can, can you just explain to me again, <clears throat> you said the number of individuals who are hospitalized um, here in Western Mass um, is much greater uh, percentage wise than, than the rest of the state. Is that <clears throat> based on our population? Is that is that accurate? Or can, can you explain that to me one more time? Sure. Across the hospital, and this is yesterday I'm talking about, not today. Mm -hmm. So across the Commonwealth, there are 600 individuals hospitalized. We have 100 of those in, in uh, who were hospitalized in Bay State. So based on, on that data, we have at least uh, one-sixth 
of the um, hospitalized individuals in the Western region, while we definitely don't have that same number of population base. So that number tells us that the, the, the hospitalizations are higher here than any place else in the state. I would say the other thing, uh, Counselor, is that in the Eastern part of the state, as you know, they have a diversity of hospital systems that are level one trauma systems. So they have the ability, even if their numbers increase, to divert, in, to, divert to other um, hospital systems. We don't have that same level of capacity here because we only have one um, trauma, uh, level one trauma uh, hospital here in Bay State. So um, yeah, we are, our numbers are, um, as Dr. Kerouac, uh, reported, uh, we are at least um, a much higher 14% versus 5% of the population. And so, I, and, and my last question, um, Mr. President, um, I, I guess in hindsight, uh, Commissioner, I know I sent you an article um, on August 20th uh, regarding the mass mandate in Boston um, that Mary Kim Janey had put in place. And so I guess looking at it, you know, um, certainly, um, you know, we, we can't can't go back in time. But do, do you think it would have been beneficial for the city of Springfield to implement the mask mandate a little bit earlier? I think one of my other, you know, concerns, and obviously I always rely on you, um, was I saw it in Long Meadow implemented before us, um, at least probably last week or maybe maybe two weeks ago. And so, you know, I guess I guess I just, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And, and do you think that there's any correlation there between our high numbers with respect to hospitalizations? That's an excellent question, Councillor Hurst. And to be quite honest, I don't know. I don't know if we had implemented sooner, would that have made a difference as far as um, prevention and mitigation strategy concern because of our low vaccination rate. So I'm not, so the, the, the masking, vaccination, um, those are things that, that uh, we uh, need to do. And in the Western region, particularly the city of Springfield, we really are driving um, as a city, the low vaccination rate numbers for Hamden County. There are other cities and towns around us uh, who have low vaccination rates, but we certainly have um, uh, one of the lowest at uh, 47 fully uh, vaccinated. So should we have acted sooner? Perhaps. Uh, could we have acted sooner? Yes. Would it have made a difference? I don't know. I don't think I can definitively say I don't, that it would have uh, made a difference as far as our case numbers are concerned. Fair enough. Uh, keep up the good work, um, and I appreciate all that you do. Thank you, Councilor Hurst. Appreciate you. Thank you, Councilor Hurst. Commissioner, I know you have a five o'clock meeting. Um, so, you know, the last thing I would just say is, is certainly, I think, um, you know, first and foremost, you certainly have my support, and I know others' support uh, in the decision to issue the mask order. I think we all recognize the importance of uh, us coming together as a community and complying with that so we can bring these numbers down. I think the other piece is, of course, continuing to work to get individuals vaccinated. So, you know, before you go, um, can you share with us any plans uh, in, in the coming weeks that we can support in terms of uh, continuing to get that message out or what we're hearing from the folks who are out uh, knocking on doors and, and continuing to spread that information? Well, are you, uh, the city council, uh, have a um, unique place uh, in the city. You have constituents who value you, who are absolutely listening to you. So what I would ask is you have social media pages. If you have places um, that you know uh, you can spread uh, the word or advocate for vaccinations, and I would very much appreciate that. There was, uh, I was on a call today uh, with, uh, and I don't, I'm not a person who knows who Nicki Minaj is. Uh, I, I, hopefully I'm saying the name correct, but I'm told that she has 23,000, 23 million followers and that she took to social media and said that um, she uh, was an anti-vaxxer or wasn't getting vaccinated because it impacted the male genitals. 
And so her 23 million followers heard this message uh, for, on social media. And if 23 million followers heard it, they then went, I'm sure, and told other individuals. And so we're in a position of needing to combat misinformation. So if there's anything, any way that you can use um, your positions of power, and you do have positions of power, to um, just get the message out to your constituents, I'm happy to give you documents, flyers, anything that you need to take into the community, I can give to you. We have all of that um, at the department, but I think that's what you can do is use your voices and try to help us defeat some of this misinformation that's out there. The last thing I'll say is we launched the Youth um, Council today. So we have three young people who are gonna join our VAX force. They will bring on six other people. So there'll be 10 young people who we will next have a uh, town hall that is focused on 35 and under. We, are, we believe very strongly that that's where we need to put some of our efforts right now. We'll have content experts, but uh, focusing on the youth. So using where you are um, to help us. And I know Councilor Letterman, you were working with um, Keyshawn at the Family Center. Perhaps you can ask him does he have one or two youth that he might recommend uh, for the youth council for VAX Force? I think there are, I mean, those are the kind of things that we need. We really are uh, needing boots on the ground uh, help as far as getting this word out. Certainly, we can definitely be in touch with uh, with Kishan about that. Well, and and other, um, I don't want to just stop there. And, I mean, I to, think, and to everybody, if yeah, you can yeah. reach out to any of your contacts or working with young people. I know also, I think uh, James G had mentioned he had uh, some young people he was working with. So um, we can certainly put the word out to put those folks in contact with you. And um, I have some other thoughts relative to that as well. So I'll, I'll be in touch with you this week on some other okay. ways we might be able to get that word out. So I, we want to uh, get you to your five o'clock meeting with the museums commissioner. Thank you so much for your continued commitment to um, bringing the city council together and to speak with you and for all your work. And um, I know the three of us certainly stand uh, at your disposal as well uh, as you need us. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm I, you know, it's um, the support I've received um, from the city council, uh, particularly the members of this committee have just been amazing. And I appreciate your questions because your probing questions help me to think. Um, and I do need to be able to, to um, have individuals who are just pricking my brain or giving recommendations and suggestions. So if you have them, as you said, Councilor Letterman, please reach out, please let me know um, because we want to do everything we can to bring us out of this uh, so that we can at least um, be in a place where we can work, live, play, and pray together in safety. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, everybody. At this time, the meeting will adjourn.